Our gracious Heavenly Father, in this wonderful, wonderful night, we surely thank you for the birth of your wonderful Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that in the course of time, in due time, Mary brought forth your wonderful Son. And thank you, Father, for the greatness of your Word, the wonderful power of your Holy Spirit. And may this be a great and wonderful night for all of our people, not only here at International, but throughout the nations of the world. So I thank you for all of our children, our young people, and our adults in the name of our living Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless. You may be seated, please. I know it's difficult for people to believe that Jesus Christ was born this time of the year because most of us were brought up with snow and sleds and Santa Claus coming down the chimney and having stockings hung up and then gifts around the Christmas tree. That's how we were brought up. And so that's the feeling we have about Christmas. And Christmas to us has meant the birth of Christ. I also was born and raised that way, had the same feeling. And if if you've read this week's article in the paper, I think it was this week's, where I talked about and shared part of the preface of the new book, uh, you will realize that I came through the same thing. I have no idea of changing the whole worship of all the unbelievers or anyone else around the world. They can serve whichever God they like, whichever way they like. But I just know that this biblically, astronomically, and historically is the first day of the birth or the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we got a rather rude awakening regarding Christmas many years ago because on Christmas at one time, Mrs. Wirwell and I and our three oldest children were in India. They had no snow. It was hotter than crazy. And, you know, I had it with sleds and Santa Claus and all those reindeers, you know, hipping and hopping. What's their names? I don't know. Uh, Dunder and Blitzen and all that stuff. And you see, here we were in India. It was the 25th of December, and it was supposed to be Christmas and no snow, no reindeer pictures, no hanging out of, of socks or something on the chimneys. None of that. And that was quite an experience. Well, you see, we believe what we believe because of what we've been taught. And your emotions get involved. And emotions can't always be trusted. The truth of God's Word can be. And so I'm grateful for this wonderful night in our ministry. And I'd like to say perhaps last night and today have been one of the greatest periods of 24 hours in the history of our ministry for many, many years. And so I'm blessed on this wonderful occasion to have the joy of having all of you and for also my joy of being with you. And it's still true that he was born in that little town of Bethlehem. In so many respects, about as significant as New Knoxville. But the prophet of old, many hundreds and hundreds of years before, had made the declaration that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. There's only one Lord. One Lord of my life, only one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of my life, is not silver. 
There's only one Lord, one Lord of my life, only one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you, Father, for the ineffable greatness of your word, the power of your Holy Spirit, and your wonderful Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. May be seated. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Rhoda. The reason I cannot say tonight thank you, Dorothy, is because her brother Bill has passed away and is awaiting the return, and Dorothy We'll be back tomorrow. On this wonderful night tonight, I'd like to share the Word of God with you regarding the subject, the heavens, the written Word, and living Word. Psalm 19, please. You see, people, God is the Word. The stars have the Word written in them. The written Word, the written Word that you have in your hands is the Word. Jesus Christ is the Word. And whenever and wherever a believer teaches or shares the truth of God's Word, that believer is the epitomization of that Word. In Psalm 19, the first verse reads, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Now the word declare in this verse is the word rehearse. God here is the word L, E L, which is, is a, an abbreviation of the word Elohim. And whenever the word Elohim is used, it's always God as the Creator. Then the word firmament in verse 1 is the word expanse. 
The word showeth, or S-H-E-W, is not sheweth. It's like pronounced like S-H-O-W. Showeth. The word showeth is setting forth, setting forth. A literal translation of usage of this great verse, one of chapter of Psalm 19 is, the heavens continuously, not continually, but continuously. The word continually means sporadically, off and on. Continuously means all the time. The heavens continuously go over and over again and again, rehearsing, rehearsing the glory of God. the Creator. And, and, all of God's expanse keeps setting forth God's great handiwork in the heavens. Verse 2, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth what? Knowledge. The word unto is the word after. This word uttereth is so beautiful in the original text. Uttereth means continuously pouring out continuously telling or continuously prophesying uttereth. The word speech is the word equals speaking. And the word knowledge in verse 2 is intelligent information. The literal translation of this verse is day in and day out. The heavens are continuously pouring forth, telling and prophesying and Night after night, the heavens continuously pour forth intelligent information. Verse 3, King James. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Speech again equals speaking. Language equals words. Voice equals words heard. Voice. When I hear your voice, it's words heard. Now you can think words without me hearing them, but when you speak them, they are words heard. This is the meaning of the word voice here in its usage biblically. Voice equals words heard. The literal translation of verse 3 is as follows. There is no speaking forth by way of the heavens, nor words they pour forth in all the earth that the words 
the heavens pour forth have not been heard. Then verse 4, King James. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The line equals the allotted measurement, the way God laid it out, the measurement. And the word earth is the created earth. And the word world in that verse is the inhabited earth. You have God's earth as he originally formed, made, and created it, and God's earth as it is inhabited in verse 4. That's why the literal translation of that verse is, the heavens, allotted measurement. The heavens, allotted measurements. And the allotted measurements of the heavens are the signs that Genesis talks about in Genesis when he said, they're for signs and seasons. Genesis 1, I believe. The allotted measurements are the signs. And the signs equal what we today call the zodiac. So the heavens, the allotted measurements, the signs, the zodiac, have gone all over the created earth. And the teachings of the heavens have gone all over or have, yes, have gone all over the inhabited earth. These are tremendous truths. Listen again to how I have worked this down in a literal translation according to usage. The heavens continuously go over and over again and again rehearsing the glory of God the Creator. The heavens are God's timetable. Man has never been able to screw up the heavens. He has screwed up the earth royally. But he's never been able to destroy the heavens. And therefore the heavens continuously go over and over again and again. And they rehe rehearse the glory of God the Creator. The heavens are God's timetable. They never fluctuate. They never. They are always on time. If man would have had a hand in it, it'd be all confused. Verse two. That's why, day in and day out. The heavens are continuously pouring forth, telling and prophesying. And night and day, the heavens continuously pour forth intelligent information. Verse 3, there is no speaking forth by way of the heavens, nor words that they pour forth in all the earth. 
that the words the heavens pour forth have not been heard. They have been heard everywhere in all the heavens that God created and the earth that He created for man to inhabit. Verse 4. The heavens, a lot of measurement, signs and zodiac, have gone over all the created earth, and the teaching of the heavens have gone all over the inhabited earth. Now it is interesting that Romans chapter 10 quotes from Psalm 19, Romans chapter 10. Verse 16, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith or believing cometh by what? And hearing cometh by what? And here is the quotation from Psalm 19 in verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Have they not heard? Sure they've heard. Sure they've heard. Verily, their sound went into what? All the earth. And their word unto the ends of what? Right. Look at Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Keep your finger in Romans. We're coming back. I told you that too late, didn't I? Hebrews 4, verse 2. For unto us was the what? Gospel preached as well as unto what? But the word, but the word preached, the word preached, the word heralded, the word spoken forth, did not profit them, did not what? Profit them, not being mixed with faith, with believing is the text. Not being what? Mixed with what? Believing. Did they hear? But they refused to do what? That's right. They refused to believe in them that heard it. They heard it, but they refused to believe what they heard. People, that's why every man is without excuse. Look at Romans 1. Romans 1. Romans 1. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. Hold is the word suppress the truth in their unrighteousness, so to speak, because that which is known of God was manifested to them, for God showed it unto them. Now, verse 20, very carefully. For the invisible things of Him, of God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, or may be clearly seen, clearly understood by the things that are what? made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without what? Our God's a just God and every man will always be without excuse. God made it available for every man to know. But the reason they don't know is because they don't want to know. They would not believe God's word. That's why it never what? Profited them. So get off of my back when you say to me, how's come the way ministry is so right about the birth of Christ 
and the Roman Catholics are so wrong and all the rest of Christendom. That's not my problem, that's theirs. So get off of my back and get on the word. Else shut up. If you can't back up what you say by the word, keep your mouth shut around me. If you do around your neighbor's own civil. But the word's the will of God for me. That's right. And today is the birthday of Christ, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. If you got the word to show me December the 25th, come up with it. You can't do it. They haven't come up with it in 2,000 years. But they pound off that same crap on us. No wonder we haven't stood approved before God. No wonder Christians have been laughed to scorn. No wonder you have no power in your life because you don't stand for the word, the word, the word. Every man is without what? Right. And even my teaching last night, last Sunday, week before, and even tonight, still running off of most of people's back like water. You, you know I'm right from God's Word, but you haven't got the guts to believe it, stand for it, and say, Thus saith the Lord, to hell with all the crap. Whatever that means. <laughs> oh, people. One of this, these days, your life's going to be over with, too. And you stand approved before God if you rightly do what? Well, do you want to stand approved before Him throughout eternity? Or do you want a few neighbors to pat you on the back or go to some religious institution that they say, oh, I'll take my believing on God's Word. This is it. This is what's made the way ministry, the Word of God. This is what's made all the criticism against the way ministry is the integrity of the word that we stand for. If we sold out to unbelievers and yelled at all that stuff and went along with what they said, they'd be patting us on the back. Not to the pats on the back. I'd rather have the reward throughout all eternity than a pat on the back. Right. Right. That's the way ministry. Okay. Look. Romans 1, 20 said, and I didn't write the book, I didn't die for you, I wasn't born for you. Well, only to the extent teach of the word, but I'm not Jesus Christ. He's God's only begotten Son. And He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly in the here and now and throughout all eternity. Taught you that at 10.30 this morning. People, it's the Word, the Word, the Word that stands. <laughs> Look at Psalm 19 again. They're without excuse. Psalm 19. The last part of verse 4. In them. You see those two words? In them. In them what? The heavens. In the heavens. In the heavens. That's where he said all this stuff. In the heavens. Everything regarding the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, all the judgments are all written in the stars. The reason this learning has been lost is because of unbelief. At the time of the birth of Christ, there was only a small group of people known as Magi who even knew that a king had been born in Judea. People, the priests didn't know it, who sat in Jerusalem. Herod the king didn't know it. The people in Bethlehem didn't know it. The Magi in the territory of what we refer to as Persia or Iran today, they knew it. And how'd they know it? From the witness of what? The stars. It's written in the stars. That's what God said in Psalm 19, what he did. 
The only thing that isn't written in the stars is the mystery, which was kept hidden secret in God from before the foundation of the world, was never made known till it was revealed to the Apostle Paul. And the mystery is God in Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. That's the mystery. That's not in the stars. For well, the scripture says, I think Christians, had Satan known it, he'd never crucified the Lord Jesus. He knew all the rest of this stuff. But he didn't know what I've just told you, the mystery. Yet, it's interesting that it says in verse 4 of Psalm 19, in them, in the stars, are all of these things written. Now then, he goes down to verse 7. The law of the Lord, that's the word. That's the word. So these things are written in the stars, and it's corroborated by the law of the Lord, which is the word of God. And that's why those two are set parallel, side by side in Psalm 19. The heavens and the written word. The written word, the heavens, and the stars, all of those, and the written word. And they cooperate. They fit. What it says in the stars is written in the word. What's written in the word, it already says in the stars, with the exception of what? The mystery. That's it. That's the word, people. So God's the word. Sure. I know that. But God wrote his word himself and his word in the stars. Then God wrote himself and his word, his will, in the written word. Then God showed forth himself and his written word, his word in the stars and in the written word in his son, Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son who is the word. People, how simple and how beautiful. That's why the only way you'll ever know the, the will of God is to know the Word of God. <laughs> now, to the end and to the degree that I speak the truth of God's Word, then I am His Word being spoken. To the end you speak the truth of God's word, you are the word being what? Right. There's a little catch. You and I are not always right. Jesus Christ was always right. He always did the Father's will. He had it all put together, something that I don't have all the time, no matter how much I try. But wherever I am on the word, it's truth, Right? And that is his word. That's why Psalm 19 is so fantastic. And that's why that Hebrews 12, I mean Revelation 12, that I taught you maybe two or Sunday nights ago, I forget. Time gets away from me. But the word never does. Revelation. Wasn't that two Sunday nights ago when I handled that? Revelation 12. Right at the time of the birth of Christ, there appeared a great wonder, a sign, a sign of the zodiac in the heavens. A woman, a woman. And the only sign of the zodiac that's a woman is a virgin. To this day, it's a woman. And every, if you start at any other place like some in astronomy do, at any other place than the virgin, you will never understand the zodiac. All the zodiac starts with the woman, the virgin. And here it is. A woman who was clothed with the sun. All of these are astronomical truths. And the moon under her feet 
and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. And that occurred. This moment of time when the sign of the zodiac of the woman was clothed with the sun and that at that moment the moon was under her feet, that occurred at the time of September the 11th, 3 B.C., between the hours of 618 and 739, sunset and moonset on that day. That's why our God not only wrote it in the stars, but he also wrote it in his what? Word. And for any man or woman who wants to know, he can know. And every man and woman is without excuse. So when people say to me, well, God's a just God. If you don't believe God or if you raise hell with God, tell him go to hell. He's a God of love. He'll take care. That's right. He'll take good care of you. You got it coming, baby. Because he has made it so that we are without excuse. So don't blame God. Yes, I know God's a just God. And I know a God. he's a God of love. But he's also a God of his word. A God of his word. And that's why the heavens declare the glory of God. The written word declare, declares the, the glory of God. And people, the living word, Jesus Christ, declared the glory of God. And to the end, people, that this word lived within us, we declare the glory of God. Okay? Thank you, Father, for the wonderful night and the greatness of your word, and that your word never changes, that your word is faithful, and all the people being unfaithful, it's still faithful. And I thank you tonight for the wonderful ministry of the way. And I thank you for people who've got enough sense to look at your word and believe it and overcome their tradition and all their wrong teaching and just take a stand on the integrity and accuracy of your word. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.